Alright guys, here it is. Wind tunnel video coming up. We recently got a chance to go to the A2 wind tunnel on Mooresville, North Carolina. This was a really cool experience for us and we got to thank bracelovers.com as we split the tunnel time with them. I'll be sure to put a link to their website in the description below. It was really cool seeing what they were able to do with a pressure drop across the radiator coupled with the increased front down force from nothing more than a louver design change. We just finished running the car with no wing for a baseline. Here we are putting on a competitor's wing that we're going to use as a comparative data point later. With those tests out of the way, we then mounted our wing. It's worth noting that both wings are mounted about roof height and about the same setback. After putting our wing through several runs with different angle changes, it's time to look at some data. So here we are looking at my computer screen. Right here we have the runs that we did, uh, no wing on the top, the 3D wing, we'll call that one, and then three runs of our wing. Zero degrees, the wing we were able to bring to the tunnel was a 66 inch span. Um, it has the gurney flap in it and the large end plates as well. We ran it at five degrees and then ten. Up here you can see we ran it at 100 miles an hour. So let's get into real quick the columns that are important to us. This uh, drag in horsepower or pounds. This is the delta. So the change from whatever one it's compared to. So this wing was compared to run one and then ours was compared to that. Vice versa. You can actually what's kind of cool about this software you can compare it to different runs and you can see the numbers automatically change so the 3D wing at a zero degree center and ours at a zero degree center is what we're going to compare to the baseline so we can kind of see what we're making so the car with a splitter on it but no wing on the back made 214, 215 pounds of drag. It did make some total downforce again because it had the splitter on it. You can see obviously all of it is in the front. The rear actually generated a decent amount of lift. Over here you can see the lift drag of the car and then the balance percent front. Obviously not very good if 350% of your <laughs> downforce is on the front of the car just because there's lift in the front. That's why that number is so skewed. Again, that just goes to point out, if you do a splitter and no wing, or a wing with no splitter, your car is gonna become extremely unbalanced. That's why a wing and a splitter pretty much always need to be done together. First run, the data point wing. You can see that the front didn't get as much just because of the leverage ratio as the wing pushes on the back it wants to lift the front that just happens normally made 111 pounds of downforce but it's also negating this 130 pounds of lift so the delta lift total front so the front we lost 46 pounds um, it should be worth noting that a negative lift is downforce so negative numbers are pushing down um, and then lift in the rear. So you can see that that wing made 242 pounds of downforce at 100 miles an hour. Run three, where we bring our wing into it, you can see that the main one we're concentrating on, again, is the rear. We made 218, 219 pounds of downforce again negating the lift so total downforce this number right here 349 and a half pounds again 66 inch span zero degrees 100 mile an hour makes 350 pounds of downforce but what's kinda cool is now we can go and look at drag numbers 
To make it easier, we're going to compare our wing to the 3D wing. So we're going to compare it to run 2. The numbers will change for us. So we made an additional 107 pounds of downforce at only an extra 5 pounds of drag. So do the math on that one, and that's pretty good. Going a step further, you can see what happens to the lift drag coefficient of the car. Jumps from a negative 1.04 all the way to a negative 1.33. The balance definitely shifts rearward at this point, but some tuning on the front or removing the gurney flap can get you back to around about where you want to be. That's probably a whole nother video aero balance versus the weight of the car so we'll, we'll kind of just negate that for now but what's interesting is the huge jump in the lift to drag ratio of the car once you swapped our wing onto it again bumping it up to five degrees we ended up making an additional 54 pounds over the wing at zero degrees picked up um, let's see, 15 pounds of drag, so you're really working the wing and the car harder. Again, the lift to drag coefficient did go up. Um, the balance will be unsettled more, but you know, pretty pretty interesting to see the the angle changes. This is where it gets interesting when we go all the way to 10 degrees. You can see we don't pick up as much going from zero to five or 5 to 10. That additional 5 degrees didn't yield too much. And over here you can see that the lift to drag coefficient actually went down from the previous run. In the video coming up, we we can zoom in on the streamers and you can actually see some separation starting on the wing behind the mount. So that's probably a good reason, uh, you know, as to why it wasn't as good of a change from 0 to 5 as 5 to 10. We're at 10 degrees. Keep an eye on the wool tufts right behind the wing mounts. You can see how they're moving around and almost flopping forward a little bit. This is a clear sign of separation. The wing's at an excessive angle at this time and we know we're approaching stall and with the mounts being in a low pressure zone it's easy to trip up that air and get separation and lose performance around the mount. So at this point of the day we got our few runs done in the morning. This is where Race Louvers comes in, uh, does a bunch of their runs. After they get done doing, um, swapping out all their different designs and everything, we then get back to doing a few changes with the wing. We're going to go to a smaller end plate. We're going to remove the gurney flap as well. We can kind of see how those numbers affect things. So here we are looking at data again. Run one is pinned to the top. We're not really concerned about that. Here, Race Louvers went ahead and did a whole bunch of runs on all of their stuff. So what's important to note is we only make one change at a time. So one of their prototype louvers is mocked up in the car and we ended up swapping end plates and then we also took out the gurney flap as well. So going from the large end plates to the small, again this column right here, the change in downforce is what we're concerned about. The car lost 13.6 pounds of downforce at 100 miles an hour. Now granted, it takes a little less drag to move that. So if you're trying to trim the car out or you need to get that balance and it's kind of your only option, that's something you can do. But let's say your car has that good front rear balance. It doesn't push, it doesn't really understeer. What you can do is upgrade from the small end plates to the large end plates and then just take a degree or two out of the wing and still make that same downforce. So that's why the large end plates are such a good efficiency gain over a smaller end plate. Large end plates are 
pretty much always better from a performance standpoint. Moving on to our last run, we ended up taking the gurney flap out. This one's pretty cool. You can see we ended up losing 61 pounds of downforce in the rear from a little tiny half inch gurney flap made that much difference. So it sort of killed the lift to drag coefficient of the car a little bit, but you can see what it did to the balance of the car. I know we said we weren't too concerned about this column, but you can see how much something as small as a gurney flap can really change the balance of the car in such a small adjustment. So again, something just interesting to see. Most people opt to have the gurney channel put in our wing just for that, that tunability for that reason. One. So now that all of our data runs are done, we're going to do the smoke across the car. So you can kind of see exactly what the air is doing, the angle it's hitting stuff, stuff like that. So, so this is where it gets pretty cool. Something to take note of in this clip is the angle that the smoke hits the wing. Despite the wing being about level with the roof line, you can still see that the smoke is coming at a downward angle when it hits the wing. This is why a wing's static angle and effective angle are two different things. A wing at a negative angle, which would be nose up in the air, could still make downforce because the air acting upon it is coming down at an angle. Alright, so there you guys have it. Hopefully that answered some questions. Hopefully you learned something. It probably arose some questions, so down below in the comments, ask whatever you want to ask. I'll try and get to it and answer it. Also, down below if you like this video and want to see more, Hit the subscribe button, definitely helps us out. And until next time, see you at the track.